Well, good morning and welcome to Stony Creek United Methodist Church. For all of our friends who are joining us via our drive-in, could I get a car honk or two to make sure I know you can hear me? Awesome. Thank you guys very much. And welcome to all of our friends who are joining us via Facebook or listening to this a little bit later on uh, on the phone. Uh, my name is Pastor Michael. I'm excited for you to be joining us today, whether in our drive-in or online or over the phone. Um, a couple quick things. Uh, we start our Advent Bible study uh, this week. Uh, there is a Monday evening option at 8 o'clock via Zoom, as well as a Thursday, no, sorry, Wednesday morning at 11, uh, also via Zoom. Um, and that was sent out via email, and we'll be putting something on Facebook probably later today as well, uh, just in case anyone else uh, has not seen that information. But it's a four-week Advent study, um, and I think it'll be a really uh, nice way to help us kind of tie the year up. So um, other than that, I don't think I have any other announcements. We do not have a liturgist this morning. Uh, Dave and Nancy... Uh, he contacted me and let me know that they have uh, contracted COVID. So that is why Dave is not here this morning. Um, so please keep them in your prayers um, along with uh, all of our other members who might be struggling with that right now. Um, but let's, uh, let's begin with our call to worship. Oh, that God would tear open the heavens and come down. Of that day or hour, no one knows, only God. Be alert, keep awake. The time is drawing near. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And we will continue with our opening hymn number 230, O Little Town of Bethlehem. you would join me now in our opening prayer. 
God of power unexpected, we want you to tear open the heavens and come down, to make mountains quake, water boil, and stars to fall until all nations tremble at your presence. But you, you will not perform according to our wants and whims. Instead, you come like the sound of sheer silence, thin, quiet. Instead, you are born among us as an infant. Instead, you show us how love is made perfect in weakness. So we will stay alert, or at least we will try, because we are your people and there is no other God beside you. Amen. We will continue with hymn number 213, Lift Up Your Heads, Ye Mighty Gates. Now is the time for our Advent reflection. We begin with a reading from Psalm 80, verses 1 through 7, and then 17 through 19. This section in the beginning is titled, Prayer for Israel's Restoration. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock, you who are enthroned upon the cherubim, Shine forth before Ephraim and Benjamin and Messiah. Stir up your might and come to save us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine that we may be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angry with your people's prayers? You have fed them with the bread of tears and given them tears to drink in full measure. You make us the scorn of our neighbors. Our enemies laugh among themselves. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. But let your hand be upon the one at your right hand, the one whom you made strong for yourself. Then we will never turn back from you. Give us life and we will call on your name. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. Paul D. Brassey makes the argument that the NSRV's angry is an interpretation of a metaphor. The Hebrew asks how long God will fume against the prayers of the people. Certainly to fume frequently means to be furious and to show it outwardly. Perhaps our psalmist envisions the prayer of God's people never quite penetrating through a thick haze of divine indifference to the suffering of God's people. The psalmist calls for God to shine forth and to let your face shine that we may be saved. This divine light, a symbol of transcendent power throughout the religions of the ancient Near East, cuts through the smoke, whether of anger or indifference, restoring God's beneficent interest and unleashing power to save. 
take a moment and consider this question. Do you think that God is indifferent to the suffering of the world, to your own suffering? We light this first candle of Advent. And please join me in an attitude of prayer. God, if I have done something to anger you, bring me to awareness that I may seek your forgiveness. Amen. We will continue now with our prayer of illumination, if you would please join me. Gracious God, heaven and earth will pass away, but your words will not pass away. Your word stands forever. May our generation be attentive so that by the power of your Holy Spirit, we remember your ways and gladly do right, meeting you wherever and whenever you appear. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our first scripture reading for this morning comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 64, verses 1 through 9. You yourselves know, brothers and sisters, that our coming to you was not in vain. But though we had already suffered and been shamefully mistreated at Philippi, as you know, we had courage in our God to declare for you the gospel of God in spite of our great opposition. For our appeal does not spring from deceit or impure motives or trickery. I apologize, that is not the right words for that scripture passage. Give me one second and we will try that again. Okay, Isaiah 64, 1 through 9, take two. Bellows down, Nebu stoops low. Nope, that's still not the right one. Sorry, pastor's a little dyslexic this morning. Okay, got it. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains would tremble before you, as when fire sets twigs ablaze and causes water to boil, come down to make your name known to your enemies and cause the nations to quake before you. For when you did awesome things that we did not expect, you came down and the mountains trembled before you. Since ancient times, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, nor eye has seen any God besides you who acts on behalf of those who wait for him. You come to the help of those who gladly do right, who remember your ways. But when we continue to sin against them, you were angry. How then can we be saved? All of us have become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous acts are like filthy rags. We all shrivel up like a leaf, and like the wind our sins sweep us away. No one calls on your name or strives to lay hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and made us waste away because of our sins. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be angry beyond measure, O Lord, and do not remember our sins forever. O look upon us, we pray, for we are all your people. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God has enriched us in every way, in speech, knowledge, and spiritual gifts. From the fellowship of Jesus Christ, we are sent out to share with thanksgiving what we have received. We will now collect our offering.
you would now join me in our doxology. Faithful God, we thank you that Christ is being revealed in every time and place until he comes again in the fullness of glory. Strengthen our testimony and spiritual gifts. Increase generosity in us, we pray, that we wait for the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite you now to a time and an attitude of prayer. Holy God, we come before you this day bringing everything to you in prayer as you taught us. We lift to you prayers of joy and thanksgiving for the blessings that we receive, for the silver linings that are showing themselves in the midst of this pandemic. We give you thanks for the opportunities to still worship together even if we are not in the same physical space. We are thankful for your grace and your mercy. Lord, we lift up this morning all of those who are in need of healing. Whether physically, emotionally, or mentally, whatever may be holding them down, causing them to stumble and struggle, Lord, we lift them to you. We especially lift up those who are battling this virus, this COVID-19 those who are fighting cancer or other injuries or illnesses, those who are in need of rest. God, we lift them all to you and ask for your healing touch. We also ask that you would continue to watch over and guide the hands of all of those who work in the healthcare industry, from the doctors and nurses to the lab technicians and research scientists to everyone at every level who is working in their own way to help keep us safe and healthy. We also give thanks this day for all of our service men and women serving in the military and armed forces, as well as our police and firefighters, our first responders, and so many others who work so hard to keep us safe in our lives. God, we ask that you would Guide them in their hearts and their minds and their words and their actions. We ask that you would please keep them safe and strong. And for those who are far away, God, we pray that they may be able to return home soon and we could begin to see an end of conflict in our world. God, we also lift up our nation and every nation in this world. Every nation is facing similar struggles with this pandemic. Good progress seemed to be being made, and now it seems every nation is stumbling backwards as numbers continue to once again rise. There is political unrest, there is social unrest, there is injustice that continues to creep among us, coming out in deplorable ways that so many seemed so unaware of. God, we pray for our nation and every nation in this world. We ask that you would guide the hearts and minds of our leaders at every level, not just in our government, but in our churches, everywhere. Touch all of our hearts and minds that we might come again to see one another as you see us, as beloved children of God, all equal and worthy of life and love and mercy. All of these things, as well as those we keep quietly upon our own hearts and minds, we lift to you this day in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now, the confidence of children of God, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Like a faded dry leaf that the wind blows away, our sins dry us up, faded and brittle. We are carried off by the wrongs we have done. Yet God loves us still and is able to restore and renew us with the water of life. If you would please join with me in our prayer of confession. Merciful God, we confess that we become distracted, even weary, in our discipleship. We keep busy schedules, we rush about, captivated by technology, seduced by the lure of consumer goods, we do not remain alert to your divine presence in our lives, in the church, in the world. Make us better doorkeepers of our lives, watching for you attentively. Awaken us to your surprising power and glory and peace, so we do not miss how near you are to our very own gates. Be gracious towards us, we pray, until we are gathered from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven into your embrace. We pray in the name of Christ, who was and is and is to come. Amen. Please take a few moments now for silent prayer and confession. Beloved children of God, the grace of God given to us in Christ Jesus strengthens us to the end so that we may be blameless when Christ comes again. Thanks to God who is faithful and has called us into the fellowship of the Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Again, hear the good news, children of God, we are forgiven. Amen. I invite you to join me now in our affirmation of faith. This is an Advent Creed written by Dave Hopwood. We believe in God the Father, creator of heaven and earth, the one who is full of patience, who is not afraid of silence, who does not need to fill each moment with activity and noise, the one who is beyond bluster and flurry, and who does not jostle for attention. We believe in God, the Son, Savior of creation, who slipped into Bethlehem one night, mostly unnoticed, who lived 30 years without headlines or hurry, who frequently took time alone with his patient father, who waited for the right time to become the suffering servant, who stood quietly before the noise of his accusers, whose silence overpowered their words, who died, then rose again on a quiet Sunday morning, we believe in God, the Holy Spirit, who strengthens, empowers, renews, and refreshes, sometimes arriving with obvious power, sometimes with the quiet breath of a whisper. We believe in one God who patiently waits for us and who longs for us to do the same. Amen. Our second scripture reading is from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. And what is printed in the bulletin may not be correct, so I again apologize. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I always thank God for you because of his grace given you in Christ Jesus. For in him you have been enriched in every way, in all your speaking and in all your knowledge, because our testimony about Christ was confirmed in you. Therefore, you do not lack any spiritual gifts as you eagerly wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. He will keep you strong to the end, so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
God, who has called you into fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, is faithful. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. If you would join me in our next hymn, number 219, What Child Is This? Our final scripture reading for this morning comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 13, verses 24 through 37. But in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory, Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Be aware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. If you'd please join me again in an attitude of prayer. Sustaining and ever-present God, 
This has been a tough year all around for humanity. There have been controversies, confusions, a global pandemic that continues to rage on, social unrests, protests, and calls for justice and equality, and so many have lost their lives. It feels like every day something else is taken away or denied from us. And while we know there are sacrifices that we must make and accept to help others, sometimes it feels like everything of the world and life we know are being stripped away. Help us, loving God, strengthen our resolve. Guide us through these winding and difficult paths that we might come through this challenging year and thrive once again as your beloved children. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts together in this place be pleasing in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, good morning again to all of you. This is the first Sunday of Advent, a season of anticipation for the coming birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For a great deal, many of us, this time of year is typically joyful, full of parties and decorating and other festivities. Advent is the prelude to Christmas, a time when typically, but not always, there is joy and merriment and laughter. People gather with their friends and their loved ones. Gifts are exchanged. Delicious meals are eaten and treats are shared, especially amongst our little ones. But as we all know much too well, this year is going to be a little different. Because of the threat of this global pandemic, large gatherings are not allowed for the safety of everyone. Even smaller gatherings have proven to not be very safe. For many people, this is the time of year when family comes together across, from across great distances to celebrate. But this year is not even safe to gather with our next door neighbors. For many people, this just does not feel like the Advent and soon to be Christmas season. So in light of this new reality we find ourselves in, I thought it would be appropriate to offer a sermon series that I hope will not only acknowledge and name the challenging times in which we live in right now, but also will provide some perspective and connection back to Scripture. And hopefully also remind us of some of the truths about our God and our faith. So today we begin our Advent sermon series, Stripped Away, What is Left?, so let's take another look at our reading from the Gospel of Mark to see what kinds of things are being stripped away there. This section of Mark's Gospel focuses on Jesus attempting to prepare his people for the end of time. And what is the first thing that is lost? But in those days after the suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The light will be lost. But that is not all. We are also told, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Now, I don't know about you, but this is really kind of scary for me to think about. Can you imagine our world with no natural light? Or really, no light at all, save for a few fires or candles, if we consider this in the context of the time in which it was written before electricity was a controlled resource and light bulbs existed. The sun will be darkened. Let's take a moment and really think about what that means, what kind of impact that has on human life and all life. No sunlight means less heat. Less heat means climate shifts. Less heat and sunlight means it is harder to grow crops. Less crops means food shortages. No sunlight for many people, or can for many people, worsen or bring about serious depression. And how do we know this? 
Well, we only need to look back just over 200 years ago when the Mount Tambora volcano in what is now Indonesia erupted in April of 1815. Not only did more than 60,000 people die, but the sulfurous gas that was expelled led to the sunlight being blocked in what experts call a year without summer. It led to food shortages and severe hardship throughout Europe and eastern North America. Or what about in 536 AD, when much of the world went dark for a full 18 months? This was caused by what has been called a mysterious fog that rolled over Europe, the Middle East, and parts of Asia, which was most likely volcanic ash. But temperatures dropped, and in some places, over 35 degrees, it dropped. Crops failed, and people died. China even recorded snow in the summer that year. There is good reason that for many, many years, people believed that the events that we now know today as solar eclipses, they believed them to be punishments from God or whatever higher power they may have believed in. Those people understood that they were being denied one of the basic tenets of life and of sustaining life. And what is one of the first things that we lost this year because of the pandemic? I would say community, or at least the sense of community and how we have defined it for countless generations. We cannot worship inside our churches because we could infect each other and people could die. We cannot gather in person in, in large groups to celebrate milestones and achievements. We cannot go and visit with our loved ones who may be in the hospital or nursing homes or hospice care. And while it is true that we do have online communities that continue to gather virtually and drive in worship services and Zoom calls and the like, somehow it's still not quite the same. Plus, despite our best efforts, nothing made by humanity is perfect. And those virtual communities can fail or become unavailable for periods of time. Facebook has crashed before. Zoom has struggled before with keeping up for the demand for access. And even as technology has developed and how we define community has expanded to include those virtual spaces, there is still at most of our core beings a desire, a need, to be physically present around other people. And right now that has been stripped away so that more lives are not lost and so that we might find a way to get this pandemic under control or trending in a better direction. So is that what this sermon is going to be about, Pastor? Just reminding us how bad things are now and how bad things were back in the time of Scripture? Way to be a Debbie Downer there, Pastor. It's bad enough to have to live through these times, now you want to spend Sunday morning reminding us all about them. Come on, I come here to feel better, not worse, Pastor. Well, the good news is that this message is not over just yet. And I promise to bring this all together. You see, when we go back to our scripture reading for today, we only need to go just a little further down to verse 26. We find the good news in this passage. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great glory and power. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. As Rodney L. Cooper points out, the return of Jesus has not be, will not be seen by just a few people, as was true of his entrance into the world when he was born in a manger, this time men will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. The reference here is to da uh, Daniel chapter 7, verse 13. This is the first time Jesus definitely connected the title Son of Man with the Daniel prophecy. All of humankind will see the Son of Man as the ruler of this universe. 
His major concern will be to gather his people together so they might share in this time of triumph. The phrase, gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven, has a dual meaning. Not only will he send his angels to gather his people from the ends of the earth, but apparently those in heaven who have gone on before will also be with him to celebrate his triumph. The people of Israel had been waiting so long for the Messiah to come. And now finally they are hearing that the Savior will come, and not just come, but come with justice and triumph and power and glory. This news itself was like light. They had been in darkness for so long, from the exile to being conquered by various kingdoms and now living under the rule of Rome. But this, this was light for them. And light brings life and growth and warmth. Light brings hope. And what about us? Where is our light? Where is our hope? What is left for us this Advent season after everything is stripped away? Have we really lost all sense of community? I mean, we have lost what I think most of us would define as community, at least at many levels. And maybe not lost completely, but at least put on hold. So what is left? Well, I would argue that there is still one community that continues to stand and rise above this time of pandemic. And that community is the family of God. We are the children of God. No one can take that away or change that except God. And because of the life and sacrifice of Jesus Christ, we are forever connected to one another as beloved children of God. And while we may not be able to gather in our sanctuary for worship, and we may be relegated to drive-in or online worship services for the time being, there is nothing stronger than the connection we share of the grace and love of God and Jesus Christ carried through the work and power of the Holy Spirit in our lives and in our souls and in our hearts. While technology has connected people across great distances on this planet, the connection we share as beloved children of God connects us not just around this globe, but also back across generations and millennia to those saints who have gone on before us into perfection. We are connected all the way back to the disciples and to the women at the tomb that morning that Jesus rose. We are connected all the way back to Mary and Martha, to all of the unnamed people who confessed Jesus as the Christ when he performed miracles and healed people, and their eyes were open to who he truly was. Now, does that connection of being God's children replace the lost sense of community that so many of us are experiencing? Probably not completely. That connection is enhanced and strengthened through our interactions with others, whether in person or otherwise. And being reminded of that connection may not fully make everything better for those who are struggling right now. But it helps. It is a light in the darkness, even if it is a smaller one for some folks. But it is a light that cannot be extinguished. It is a light full of truth and love and grace. It is a light that when we trust it fully, can light the path that God would have us follow in our lives. It is a light that no matter how dark it gets, will always shine. I know this season is hard. Both in the sense of this season of pandemic that seems to have stripped away so much from us, as well as this season of Advent that seems so vastly different than almost any time in our lives. 
but we must remember that we are a resurrection people. We believe in life after death. And there will be a death to this pandemic. And life will once again triumph and move along. Life may look a little bit different. We may not see everything we had seen around us before it all started, or at least not right away. But life will continue. This is a season of anticipation. We are anticipating a change in the trajectory of this pandemic, hopefully towards its end, and we continue to anticipate the coming of our Savior Jesus to be born into the world, not to judge the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Jesus is that light. Jesus is that community and that connection. And Jesus is our Savior, part of the everlasting triune God, holding all power and love and mercy and grace. Our God is an awesome God and continues to keep us connected together, even in the darkest and hardest times of our lives. That connection cannot be broken or severed because it was made in love, in the most perfect love. Amen. If you would join me as you are able for our closing hymn number 224, Good Christian Friends Rejoice. <coughs> Beware, keep alert, keep awake. God is doing awesome things we do not expect. And Christ is coming near with great power and glory and with tenderness. May God strengthen us to the end. Christ draw near to our very gates and the Holy Spirit awaken our spirits until with eager longing we greet the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Go now in peace and serve the Lord. Amen.